term antibody drug conjugation in cancer therapy. I think all of this very in line with the current state of health technology. I would like and International Islamic University Malaysia IIUM, SPK Professor Dr. Muhammad Tahir Bahtiar, Senior Lecturer of Department of Pharmaceutical Technology IIUM in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Let me introduce myself. My name Puji Isyanto, Vice Rector of Universitas Buana Perjuangan Karawang, or uh, UBP, <laughs> yes. UBP Karawang, West Java in Indonesia. Uh, I, I will give brief uh, profile about the Universitas Buana Perjuangan Karawang. And now, higher education cooperation is very, very important. As I said, it's very, very important towards improving the quality and in institutions as graduates. Uh, higher education or universities can apply independent learning on independent campus about uh, domestic or global. In Indonesia, uh, independent learning and independent campus, which is a uh, MBKM, Merdeka Belajar Kampus Merdeka, yang kita kenal dengan program Menristek Dikti tentang MBKM, sehingga program kolaborasi collaboration as will very very important to universities. Universitas Buana Perjuangan Karawang was established uh, to accommodate the need of the Karawang community for science and technology which are changing rapidly. This is related uh, to local government program in increasing the human development index for the Karawang community in West Java, Indonesia, and play an active role in national building. Universitas Buana Perjuangan Karawang uh, is the capital of the Karawang Regency of West Java, Indonesia. It is uh, is very very near from Jakarta, about uh, 32 miles east of Jakarta. Uh, Karawang Regency is known as a major rice production, sebagai lumbung padi di Indonesia, rice production in Indonesia in West Java, Karawang. Karawang is also known for its industrial area for manufacturing such as automotive, automobile, electronics, uh, manufacturing facility, health manufacturing, industrial hospital. In Karawang, about uh, 29 hospital in Karawang, including uh, rumah sakit umum and rumah sakit swasta. In manufacturing facilities in Karawang, West Java, Indonesia, including Toyota, Honda, Yamaha, Mitsubishi, and manufacturing uh, the other. Uh, as the collaboration conducted UBP Karawang with institution, with company, with uh, universities, this activity provides a benefit for but parties based on mutual benefit and trust purpose. Kami menginginkan kolaborasi ini lebih dekat lagi, tidak hanya sebatas uh, kuliah tamu ataupun mungkin nanti bisa saling pertukaran, join research, join publication. Further collaboration is contained in the draft cooperation agreed by both parties. Some benefits as acceptable as follow improve university improve the image of institution at our company that actively participate and care about the environment especially the world of education and collaboration acceptable participate in the development of a higher education curriculum 
by the needs of the community and the industrial world. As like this moment in Zoom meeting, a guest lecture about term uh, industrial drug in cancer therapy. Yeah, antibody drug conjugation in cancer therapy. It's very, very important in technology of health technology. Uh, terakhir, kami mengucapkan terima kasih. Thank you for a speaker, Professor Dr. Muhammad Tahir Bakhtiar from IAUM Malaysia, Universitas Bakti Tunas Usada, Pak Dekan Farmasi, Universitas Garut, dan juga Universitas Buana Perjuangan Karawang. Uh, semoga collaboration yang kita bangun menjadi peningkatan untuk institusi dan kualitas lulusan di semua perguruan tinggi yang terjamin untuk mendapatkan kualitas yang diakui oleh masyarakat. University of Buana Perjuangan Karawang supported this uh, agenda, supported the collaboration uh, of facility-facility or uh, support uh, dukungan, ya, yeah, support dukungan uh, student internship, development and technology, educational scholarship, established joint committee, and so on. Sekali lagi, terima kasih. Dan demikian yang dapat kami sampaikan. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih, Pak. Thank you for your speak, um, Dr. Hedi Rianto, as a vice rector from UBP. Uh, and then we can say hello from Uniga. Um, Ibu Dr. Miss, Mrs. Dr. Rizka, are you here? Yes, I am, Pak. Yes, please. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the attending the guest lecture collaboration. And a special thanks to Ofrop M. Tahir Bahtiar. Terima kasih atas kehadirannya. Uh, I would like to say thank you too for the UBTH uh, for organizing this event. Uh, I, uh, I we hope to get a lot of benefit from this event. Uh, thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you from uh, Uniga, Mrs. Rizka Prasetyawati. And then uh, uh, next agenda is the lecture we have been waiting for. We proudly present the lecture from International Islamic University Malaysia, Prof. Tahir. Assalamualaikum, Prof. Tahir. Waalaikumsalam. Okay. Um, okay, terima kasih. For the next, I will read about his uh, CV or curriculum vitae. Full name, Prof. Uh, Dr. M. Tahir bin Bahtiar, PhD. Prof. Tahir obtained his Bachelor of Pharmacy from University of Andalas, Indonesia in 1997 and Master of Science in Natural Product Chemistry from University of Technology Malaysia, UTM, in 2000. His PhD in uh, Bioprocess was obtained in 2005 from UTM, and soon after that, he joined the uh, International uh, Islamic University Malaysia. His research is interest in, is in drug uh, discovery involving uh, extraction, isolation, characterization, and bioactivity study of natural products from plants. His current research is uh, one wound healing, anti-cancer, anti-obesity, anti-diabetes study of several medicinal plants using animal cell culture. He has published several papers in reputable journal and has contributed chapter in books. Okay, uh, let's uh, we can for the next few hour. Um, um, over the next few hour, this meeting will provide you plenty of opportunity to discuss, share knowledge and insight about antibody drug conjugation in cancer therapy. To Professor Dr. M. Tahar bin Pehtiar, please. Okay, baik. <coughs> Terima kasih, uh, Pak Adiki. Uh, 
for kind introduction. Uh, uh, juga terima kasih kepada tiga institusi yang sudah uh, bergabung bersama untuk mendengarkan kuliah tamu dari saya yang mungkin um, uh, little knowledge ya dari saya. Uh, jadi uh, izinkan saya untuk I mean, apa? Uh, uh, saya apa nih slide? Boleh dilihat? Yap. Okay, baik. Okay. Uh, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. It's my great uh, pleasure to be here uh, as a uh, guest uh, lecture at two, three institutions in Indonesia. And I would like to thank uh, the organizer host for this uh, uh, lecture. So um, my topic is on uh, antibody drug conjugates yeah, or ADC for cancer therapy. Actually, this uh, field of uh, uh, therapy um, um, is quite uh, new. It was uh, introduced in 2011. Uh, but before that, uh, there are some research uh, had been done yeah, with regard to the use of uh, antibody actually to carry the drug uh, to the target site. Yeah. Uh, this kind of uh, therapy is quite different compared to other type of uh, chemotherapy. Yeah? Uh, the conventional chemotherapy is just use uh, drug, yeah? chemicals, uh, drugs like tamoxifen, uh, what else, um, doxorubicin, yeah? they need to be uh, uh, taken orally yeah? or through intraperitoneal uh, routes. Yeah? But uh, we know that the conventional therapy is quite uh, or what called uh, harmful to the patient, it can actually um, affect normal cell as well, because uh, no specific uh, 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 action yeah, of the drug, because the effect is systemic. Yeah? It is uh, throughout the body. It will affect uh, uh, other cells and organ as well. So by using this kind of uh, approach, um, we can actually uh, use yeah, monoclonal antibodies to carry the uh, anti-cancer uh, drug yeah, that can be um, released yeah, to the site of the cancer. Um, so the basic knowledge of this actually we get to the introduction of antigen and antibody. We know that antibody is specific, very, uh, very specific to bind to the antigen. So this kind of approach is uh, um, quite uh, what called uh, useful, yeah. So the problem in ADC is, uh, actually um, is quite um, uh, uh, manifest as well because not all uh, anti-cancer drug can be uh, conjugate, yeah? can be bind with um, uh, antibody in order to carry them to the target, target site, yeah. So there are some actually uh, uh, constraint and other parameter that need to be observed, yeah. Um, uh, so I will try to explain, uh, uh, I mean, uh, from the beginning, uh, like A to Z in just a few hours, yeah, one to, or maybe one hour. Yeah. I hope that uh, all of you, uh, the respected lecturers and also students can get uh, benefit from this. Uh, but actually this kind of therapy is quite helpful because uh, it can reduce the side effect of uh, uh, drug yeah, to the body. Yeah, just only what we want actually just to kill the cancer cell, not to kill the uh, healthy cells and other type uh, the tissue. Yeah. So, uh, but the kind this kind of therapy is quite expensive. Yeah. Maybe not available. I'm not sure whether it is available only in Indonesia. Uh, actually, uh, so far uh, only two yeah successful ADC drug that is available, especially for breast cancer and also uh, uh, non-Hodgkin cell lymphoma. Yeah. Um, this actually this picture is actually example. Yeah, actually the successful one, uh, uh, Azetris and also Catsila. Yeah, my my last drug, uh, my last drug not uh, successful. <clears throat> so I will go to the um, uh, history yeah, um, regarding the use of uh, antibody in the, uh, therapy. Basically, antibody itself can be used to treat. Uh, actually, but antibody itself is working actually to kill any uh, foreign substance uh, in our body. Uh, 
um, we know antibody, right? Healthy people will produce it, yeah, in response to any kind of uh, foreign substance. Yeah, foreign substance here can be virus, can be uh, bacteria, can be cancer. Yeah, so it, actually they are doing their job without our sometimes without our concern, yeah, <laughs> because human body is quite almost uh, actually creates in very perfect ways, but. Uh, Maybe in certain condition we are not able to manage it. Sample uh, with certain condition, uh, I would not about to produce in um, a good amount of uh, any kind of biochemical antibody, including in insulin. Sample. In normal people, they don't have problem with uh, how to metabolize carbohydrate. But certain people, they have problem with how to metabolize the carbohydrate. So that kind of actually, uh, so this condition they need to be helped. Yeah, I mean, uh, we need to supply from outside. So this actually uh, theory is basically uh, um, uh, uh, introduced by uh, Paul Ehrlich, yeah, in 1909, actually, we got to magic bullets. Yeah? Magic bullet means uh, they are going to the target, yeah, and uh, uh, target uh, directly, yeah, uh, like we are uh, aiming to uh, something using uh, Nuclear bomb, bomb or something you want to <laughs> bomb some, somewhere actually far away from much, but actually not going to other uh, uh, other place. <laughs> so this story, and then uh, 1976, yeah, uh, Kohler and already employed actually how to produce uh, uh, a large amount of monocantibody. So basically, um, what happened in our body? Um, um, the cancer cell actually. Uh, is considered as foreign substance. Yeah? Actually, uh, in uh, the cancer that uh, uh, produced by you know patient, actually the the, the surrounding, yeah, the killing uh, cells, the uh, surrounding cell they produce uh, uh, proteins. Yeah, with proteins we call it antigen. Yeah, sometimes uh, this terminology can be interchanged. Yeah, we know that protein. Yeah, uh, but sometimes can be uh, antigen. Yeah. But the antigen must be protein, yeah. So uh, the, what is protein? Protein is actually made by peptide. Peptide made by uh, amino acid, yeah. So this peptide or protein is specific to bind to antibody, yeah. So basically, the patient with uh, cancer, sample and other kind of disease, they are, they will produce um, uh, antigen in their body. So I think uh, the antigen is just only surrounding the cancer cells, yeah, and then. The, uh, if we use antibody to detect them, yeah, antibody will be easily to detect. Yeah, I mean, they can detect and bind surrounding cell, surrounding the cancer cell. And at the side, if we able to bind or uh, conjugate the antibody that our antibody with uh, drug, anti cell drug, we will also allow yeah, the drug to be brought into the target and will be released. Yeah. So release there is depend on the con uh, uh, condition or incremental uh, condition surrounding the cell can be based on the peptides. Uh, it can be based on the, what you call ACGT. Uh, it can be based on the pH as well. Yeah. So we'll see it later. Yeah. So this is actually the basic uh, uh, basic uh, theory we get to the use of uh, uh, monoclonal antibodies uh, uh, in drug delivery. So uh, before that, uh, we, we have to know that actually uh, antibody itself can kill, eh? can kill the cancer cells. Eh? So, but sometimes they are not able to, uh, we, um, not sufficient enough to uh, cancel. Yeah? So meaning in uh, an ADC, yeah, antibody drug conjugation uh, using monoantibodies, actually what we expect is actually synergistic stick, yeah? synergistic effect of uh, monoantibody itself and uh, uh, drugs. Yeah? Drug here is chemical. So uh, let's uh, uh, check. Yeah, we get to the uh, what called the market of monocantibodies. You see the top sales uh, uh, pharma drug in 2020. Yeah, um, the first one is Humira. You see this MAB. Yeah, MAB uh, refer to monocantibodies. Yeah, so meaning uh, the top sales. Yeah. Top selling uh, uh, drugs in 2020, 2021, not available yet. I try to find, but this one just quite all that 2020. But uh, what we can see here, monocontinuity is the top, yeah, 
not paracetamol, not what else, what you expect <laughs> to be the top here. Yeah? Uh, and uh, how to recognize the jelly, yeah? uh, uh, Humira, yeah? jelly, this one is for uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Yeah? You see MAB yeah? and uh, at the end our uh, suffix of the name. Yeah? Actually, this one is uh, one of antibodies. What else? Uh, Ketruda also one of antibodies. Yeah? Uh, Stelera. Uh, can you see my arrow? Uh, my arrow? I'm I'm showing something using just arrow, not can can you see? I move my arrow. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. I think I, I don't need to use pen, yeah. I just or maybe you can use pen. <laughs> just to uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Okay. Uh, so see you see uh, what else? Um uh, MAB, uh do P uh, uh big sand also, yeah. So a uh, So this actually just uh, what call it? Um, uh, showing us that actually uh, monoclonal body is very important in uh, uh, therapy. So um, why uh, people uh, prefer to use monoclonal body in therapy because of side effect? Yeah. Actually, what, whatever drug that we consume, yeah, chemical drugs, yeah, what we uh, any chemical drug that we consume, actually, this this uh, they are toxic to our body, yeah, because uh, they are. Not uh, actually something that uh, commonly recognized yeah, by our body. It will, af it will affect um, kidney for uh, uh, disposal and also uh, uh, liver to metabolize it. Yeah? And then if you use uh, biologic product, yeah? monocontrolism is considered as biologic. Biologic means something that is bio, uh, bio is actually mimicking what actually our body produces. Yeah? So uh, it has less uh, uh, side effect yeah, to our body. So nowadays people uh, 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 believe that to use biologic drug is more, uh, I mean, uh, 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 safe yeah, compared to chemical drugs. Yeah? And then that's why uh, trending now the people to, uh, uh, would like to get the biologic, yeah? biologic biopharmaceutical product. Yeah? Not, not natural product. Yeah? Natural product is actually uh, uh, producing chemical. Yeah? They are not safe. Yeah, some people said that natural product is safe. I said, no, uh, chemical uh, natural product is producing chemicals. Yeah, even though they are from uh, natural. Yeah, natural mean uh, they are naturals again synthetic. Yeah, this is actually a different way. But the natural product also produce chemical. So no, I'm not against. That's just compare. Yeah? Not against natural product. Yeah, whatever. Uh, as you know, natural product is actually the source of the drug nowadays. Yeah. Uh, but uh, 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 they are different, they are different. And then to regard to the market, yeah, market antibody, you see the, based on the figure uh, just now, it is uh, um, it was uh, uh, five, uh, uh, 50 billion. Yeah? So it is quite uh, huge. Meaning um, uh, if we, uh, you know, uh, all of us are becoming pharmacy or becoming a pharmacy, yeah? this one is quite uh, important. Uh, to be the fault in future because uh, uh, we gain just uh, you know very huge of uh, income to the country also to the company also that can uh, you know help people to work in that company and then to, uh, we get to the use of monoclonal bodies yeah uh, as uh, uh, you mentioned just now actually there are some uh, 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 a benefit of monoclonal antibodies. The first one is used uh, to be used in diagnostic. Yeah, actually, uh, if uh, actually uh, uh, the antibody that is produced by a body can be used as diagnostic. For example, for someone with something infection, whatever cancer, they need to check the amount of antibody titer yeah, in their body to need to check what kind of disease yeah, um, uh, happening to that people. For example, and then. Uh, uh, one country can body can be used in this region. Yeah, if you are familiar with ELISA, ELISA is actually using monoclonal bodies. Yeah, so the basic principle of uh, ELISA is uh, antigen antibody recognition. Yeah, so only specific antigen will be recognized by, by specific antibody. Yeah, so to quantify, quali qualify, uh, quantify, uh, quantification and quality uh, and quality uh, uh, assessment can be used. Yeah. And also uh, for human therapy, yeah. Human therapy meaning uh, 
uh, we can use uh, monoclonal antibody directly as medicine. Yeah. And last one is uh, for drug recovery. Actually, this is actually what um, uh, uh, what our topic today to use monoclonal antibodies as a um, uh, drug recovery uh, system. So uh, the basic, actually, uh, basic uh, 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 what called the reason eh, why uh, monoclonal can be used in the, uh, drug delivery. You see this uh, illustration of cancer cells. Yeah, this cancer cells. So the cancer cell is uh, something that uh, I mean weird, yeah, or something that. Uh, Asing uh, bagi badan kita ya, bagi tubuh kita. So uh, surrounding the cancer cell, they will produce protein ya. It will produce different kind of protein specifically ya. So specific uh, uh, protein ya is produced by specific cancer like breast cancer. They produce HER2 uh, protein ya. Marker dia HER2 ya. And also for non-Hodgkin lymphoma, they produce CD30 ya. Uh, CD30. So specific cancer cell they will produce specific uh, type of uh, protein. Yeah, Pro that this protein is considered as antigen. Yeah, is antigen. And then we can just find um, uh, the suitable monoantibody to recognize it. Yeah, recognize it. Then and then um, they will bind. Yeah, they will bind. Uh, I mean the antibody uh, monoantibody and antigen will be binding. Yeah. So I meaning um, in this monoantibody we can add Yeah, we can add or conjugate drug. Yeah, so meaning when um, uh, ADC has been uh, uh, prepared or we uh, produce ADC antibody drug conjugation, meaning the antibody is carrying drug, so we can um, inject to the patient. Yeah, through parenteral administration, so the antibody carrying drug will go directly to this uh, cells, yeah, to cancer cell and bind. Yeah. And this, uh, because surrounding the cancer cell, they have different condition when you get to the uh, uh, pH, yeah, can be because of uh, uh, enzyme surrounding here. We'll check it later how. So uh, the drug later, because of different con uh, different um, uh, 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 condition, the drug will be released, yeah? The drug will be released, but the drug will not be released during the transport, during the travel. Yeah, when we inject through blood vessel, so the drug will be go to the target. Yeah, so we don't want the drug to be released during the travel process. Yeah, before they are reaching the uh, cancer site. Yeah, so this actually uh, we have to play with the. Uh, Uh, we what call the linker, yeah, linker that can link. Um, the linker must be specific, uh, you know, to react with uh, different condition later on. Yeah? So the drug should do, should be released yeah, during the travel yeah, when we inject sample through parenteral immunization and goes to the uh, target site. Yeah? So the drug should don't um, should not be released yeah, during the tra uh, travel or transport. Let's search uh, about uh, monoantibody itself. Yeah? Uh, antibodies sometimes we call it immunoglobulin, yeah? Ig. Yeah? Normally we call it Ig. Yeah? Group of uh, glycoprotein produced by lymphocyte, yeah? beta lymphocyte in response to antigen. Actually, we can make antibody. Yeah? We can make antibody. Normally the uh, therapeutic antibody is produced uh, using mouse. Yeah? Using mouse, not human. Yeah? Because we need to sacrifice the uh, <laughs> The cell, so we cannot use ethically. We, ethically, we cannot use human to produce antibody. So many uh, the monoantibodies that are available in the market actually originally uh, from uh, a mouse. Yeah, we create from mouse production, and later on we can modify the structure uh, to be accepted. Yeah, maybe some of you are concerned about uh, uh, rodent product. Rodent means uh, product product from mouse mice uh, what called uh, rats yeah uh, what else any rodent rodent like uh, hamster cannot uh, be accepted by human yeah but we need to do something on the structure of non body in order uh, you know to reduce the immunogenic reaction yeah uh, by our body and then uh, antibodies um, the we get to the their shape it is like a y yeah y, y shape yeah 
simply uh, presentation as um, wise chef yeah uh, can be found uh, in our body in order to respond a foreign object yeah remember that actually foreign object here must be protein yeah if introduced protein to our body a uh, foreign protein our body will create the antibody yeah in uh, uh, infection infection is coming from bacteria or virus example yeah they are carrying uh, uh, their own um, uh, protein right they have specific so our body recognizes a nice foreign protein so i will recognize uh, and then our body will uh, generate antibody against it yeah including um, what else uh, but uh, must be protein based yeah a uh, protein based Sebenarnya, you inject needle or jarum to your skin, uh, but jarum, just jarum is uh, sterile. Our body will not create any antibody because there is no uh, protein there. Yeah? So please uh, just uh, you know to remember that the foreign substance must be a uh, protein. And then uh, we have to, to understand the chemistry of antibody because we need to modify it uh, in order to be uh, acceptable for human. Yeah? So when we get to the structure, it has uh, amino, yeah, carboxyl and so hydroxyl sulfhydryl in the structures, yeah, and then uh, the monoclonal bodies has um, what we call uh, antigen uh, binding fragment, we call it FAB, and also complement fixing fragment, yeah, FC, yeah, and um, FAB fragment is responsible to uh, specific uh, um, uh, antigen binding, yeah. So this FAB is responsible to detect uh, the uh, foreign, uh, I mean the the partner, uh, the pasangan uh, protein there, yeah. Because antibody is very specific, yeah, to certain antigen only, yeah. And FC fragment binds to the effector cells, yeah. That one actually uh, to produce uh, in vivo biological response. Uh, so uh, again, we get to structure of uh, monoclonal bodies. Yeah, it has um, uh, two antigen uh, binding site. Yeah, or epitopes. Yeah, that, co that can recognize uh, antigen. Yeah, and uh, its subunit yeah, antibody contains uh, two light yeah, chain. Yeah, and two heavy chains. Yeah, and then the variable domains uh, all antibodies. Um, uh, contain amino acid sequences located both. Uh, Heavy and L chains, yeah. So check later. We will get to the structure, and then um, the heavy chains determine the class of uh, antibody itself, yeah. So the heavy chain will color classify them into uh, um, uh, uh, what call uh, gamma, yeah, uh, Ig, yeah, uh, IgM, IgA, IgD, but this one in symbol, yeah. Uh, this one uh, uh, gamma, mu, alpha, delta, and epsilon. Yeah? So, but uh, in uh, in uh, in the scientific uh, purpose, they use IgG, IgM, IgA, and also IgD as well as IgG, IgE. Okay, and then the, you see the the class, yeah, the class of uh, uh, monoclonal bodies, yeah. Um, uh, they have IgG, yeah, the heavy chain, we call it gamma, yeah, IgM, IgA, IgD, and IgE, yeah. So they have different uh, molecular weight, yeah. Um, IgA actually dimer, yeah, dimer of monoclonal bodies. They have specific function actually, yeah. Uh, so I use IgG, IgM, IgE. Actually, they have uh, specific. So let's maybe you can just check uh, what is the function of each, yeah. Um, so uh, this uh, uh, simplified uh, 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 presentation yeah, of uh, uh, immunoglobulin, yeah, monoclonal antibodies. Yeah. So they have a heavy chain. The longest one is uh, this one is uh, actually heavy, yeah, heavy chain here. Yeah, and I have a, a, a light chain. Yeah, and this one is AB, FAB. Yeah, they can recognize the uh, uh, antigen. This one is actually uh, 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 the function is uh, for uh, in vivo pharmaceutical action. Yeah. So um, because of um, 
uh, structure yeah, of non quantum body is quite uh, big. Yeah, we call it macro molecules. Yeah, this macro molecule because of uh, its molecular weight is very huge. Yeah, compared to chemical drug. Yeah, so uh, let's say IgG. Yeah, its molecular weight is uh, 150 kilo Dalton. Yeah, uh, for chemical drug. The molecular weight just only in uh, Dalton something, yeah, uh, not uh, uh, some uh, what uh, kilo Dalton, yeah? not reaching kilo Dalton. Um, uh, you can play with the structure of uh, monocultural bodies by uh, uh, reduce uh, reducing yeah? their size using uh, two uh, kind of enzyme, yeah, pep pep papain, yeah, also pepsin, yeah. Uh, papaya actually from papaya, yeah. So papaya can uh, cut, yeah? cut uh, uh, at that uh, this hinge yeah? of uh, uh, body to produce this two FAB, yeah? produce uh, uh, less uh, uh, molecular weight, yeah. And pepsin can cut at this uh, uh, at this uh, uh, position, yeah. And just follow your um, uh, list. Actually, you can actually cut the structure, yeah? even though the structure is quite big. Yeah, uh, you can uh, cut them uh, using uh, uh, two enzymes, yeah? pepain or so pepsin. So, um, uh, because the structure is uh, very um, huge, yeah? uh, consists of uh, amino acid in the structure, yeah. And uh, as we know, the monocultural body is produced uh, originally from uh, mouse, yeah. So we have to understand each um, uh, sequences, yeah, of the uh, uh, amino acid structure. So actually, we can replace, yeah, we can replace. Uh, uh, the mouse uh, part of the monocular body with a human part in order to be uh, uh, accepted by human body. Yeah? So this, you see the, this engineering on it, yeah? this we call it monocular antibody engineering. Yeah? If you're interested, a student, yeah? to the student interested to do more on this monocular antibody, actually there is uh, engineering on it, yeah? to replace uh, one amino acid with other in order to be accepted by human body. And then the, after the successful yeah, engineering yeah, uh, modification of the uh, original monocultural body from uh, uh, mouse, yeah, because original, originally it is produced from mouse, yeah, uh, later uh, we will have different kind of uh, uh, monocultural antibodies. Yeah. You see the murine antibody is derived uh, from mouse, yeah, it is 100%. Yeah. Uh, from mouse, yeah. Uh, this one, yeah. This uh, they label with O, yeah. And then um, they do some modification on this uh, near to FAB fragment, yeah, with human uh, uh, antibodies, yeah. So re replace this part becoming uh, chimeric, uh, um, I don't know, antibody about seven, uh, 60 to 70 percent, yeah. And then uh, later they try to replace with. Um, uh, 95, uh, 90, 95%, yeah, human uh, sequences becoming um, zoo, yeah, humanized, yeah, and also to uh, they replace all body with uh, human part will be uh, human, um, will be uh, fully human, yeah, we call it uh, dynamic with you. Um, we can actually recognize uh, 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 that this type uh, based on their name, yeah, we can check later, yeah. Uh, whether they are coming from uh, chimeric, humanized, or fully human, you can recognize them based on their name. Yeah? So, like this, yeah. Uh, this murine antibody, this originally from uh, mouse, yeah. We call it uh, the name is uh, Momek eh, Safik, yeah. The uh, what call the penghujung, eh? nama dia tu ada uh, Momek, yeah. And it, if they are chimeric, yeah, Zmap, yeah. So at size ZMAC, for example, yeah? if it is human, humanized antibody, yeah? meaning about 90% yeah? of the structure on the, coming from human uh, uh, amino acid yeah? will be ZUMAC. Yeah? And um, if a represent uh, human replaced by human antibody, yeah? it will be MUMAC. Yeah? So uh, 
this uh, actually they modified this one can be used for therapy yeah but this one cannot be used for therapy next uh, how to produce yeah how to produce uh, monoclonal antibodies uh, it can be uh, produced using in vivo production using mouse acid test and also can be used using in vitro yeah using mammalian cell culture bacterial transgenic animals and also transgenic plants let's uh, check on this interesting uh, production using in vivo method um, so in this uh, process uh, if you want to produce uh, uh, antibodies against certain cancer yeah we can just isolate the cancer cells from human yeah we can uh, introduce it yeah? inject it into mouse yeah what happened yeah because uh, the cancer cell is carrying uh, protein, yeah, specific uh, protein that is considered as antigen by uh, mouse, yeah? and then uh, the immune system will recognize them as foreign substance. Yeah? And of course, there is a response yeah, from mouse itself to generate antibody. Yeah? Yeah? The antibody will be generated against um, uh, that cancer is very specific. Yeah? And then um, uh where actually yeah the antibody will produce in spleen yeah spleen cell of the mouse yeah and then the, the spleen cell will be removed yeah so meaning the spleen cell is able to to generate yeah antibody against that cancer yeah and then um, after that yeah um we um from other side of the uh, table example yeah we obtain myeloma cells yeah so the spleen cell is considered as um, if you are familiar with cell culture, yeah, the spleen cell can be cultured. Yeah, we can culture any uh, cell from all part of our body, yeah, from your skin, yeah, from vein, uh, bone, uh, lung, uh, spleen. What else? Uh, can we can culture them outside? Yeah, we can just uh, take. Uh, you know, you can if you are able to cut <laughs> your you know organ you can you can culture actually yeah but uh, the nature of spleen cell is um, mortalized mortalized mean just you can able to culture them uh, for two three subculture uh, passage yeah i mean just on within one week the cell will be die yeah? uh, and then uh, uh, of course we can stop our but we don't want to be happen yeah so uh, in order to extend yeah, the um, uh, life of spleen cell, yeah, we obtain myeloma cell yeah, from mouse tumor, but we can actually uh, purchase it from cell bank, no problem. And um, this myeloma cell is actually uh, immortalized. Yeah? We, call, we call it immortalized, can be cultured continuously yeah, without having uh, you know, uh, death yeah, during the culture. And then the spleen, yeah, the spleen cell and also the myeloma cell will be uh, fused, yeah. We combine, we culture them together in the blood, uh, yeah, and we call it hybridoma. Yeah? If you're familiar with uh, hybridoma uh, terms, yeah? actually have a hybrid, yeah, hybrid actually mix, yeah, including car, yeah? hybrid car. They are using battery and also uh, petrol, yeah? hybrid. Sometimes the, the human can also be hybrid. <laughs> no, just. Uh, I mean, so the, maybe the temperamental hybrid, for example, yeah, uh, merge together in one people uh, can be uh, another study for that. Yeah? And then, um, so now we have a, a hybrid or fuse, yeah. And then to, um, during the merging, yeah, during the merging or match or fuse of a uh, spleen cell hydroloma. Some of them are not uh, by uh, are not matched, yeah. They are not uh, combining, yeah. So in order to kill myeloma cell from the culture, we can add um, drug actually to kill myeloma cell. Actually, we don't want yeah myeloma cell to to grow in our culture. Yeah, we can add drug. Yeah. So just only a successful few cell will be a uh, culture in future. Yeah? And then. Um, each hybridoma is isolated. Later, we can isolate that cell and allow them to grow, yeah, uh, to produce monoclonal antibodies. Yeah, then each monoclonal antibody is screened, yeah, for its um, ability to attack coronal cells. So we can isolate the uh, 
monoc antibody, yeah, try to culture them in another site. Yeah. So this one is really good to cell culture. Yeah. Uh, I hope you have some uh, idea on actually um, how uh, uh, cell culture uh, to be conducted. Yeah. And then whether the desired hydroma cell are injected into mouse again, yeah, actually to check, um, you know, to produce in large scale. Uh, so this is actually the production yeah, of the um, non quantity bodies using uh, in vivo technique. Yeah. So uh, like this, yeah, antigenic uh, antigen yeah, can be cancer cell. For example, you want to produce uh, antigen again, uh, lung cancer, for example. Yeah, we can just isolate the, you know, you can take it from uh, from human. Yeah and uh, inject yeah, into this um, uh, mouse. So mouse will generate yeah, antibody in their spleen, right? Spleen cell. So we kill, yeah, of course, we need to sacrifice yeah, the animal, take the spleen. Yeah? Spleen, we culture it. Yeah? We culture it on this plant. Yeah? Uh, and then this spleen cell, we know the nature of spleen cell is uh, uh, mortalized. Yeah? It can you know, just only few can uh, survive only for a few days. And then this uh, we can obtain myeloma cell. Yeah, myeloma is uh, immortalized. Yeah? It can um, uh, survive for a long time. Yeah? and then we fuse them. Yeah, fuse them in the same. Yeah, actually this uh, two different cells we culture at the same uh, plate. Yeah, they will fuse. Yeah, they will uh, merge together, and then um, we will produce hybrid hybridoma cells. Yeah, and then later we can select. Yeah. Uh, using uh, drug to kill unsuccessful uh, few cells, yeah? and later we can get uh, pure or uh, uh, pure uh, culture. Yeah? So this is really the, base, uh, the, the the simplified technique. Yeah? Uh, how to produce monoclonal bodies. And then, um, so we get to the name yeah? uh, monoclonal bodies. You can uh, obtain uh, maybe in the market later. For yeah? uh, example. Prefix can be various, yeah. Prefix, I think the awal nama can be uh, uh, apa yeah. And then target, what is the target of the uh, that antibody, yeah? Like viral, they use uh, vir, yeah. Uh, the source later on, yeah. You can see uh, from human, you or mouse, uh, a rat, something like that. And the uh, and yeah, the suffix must be mab. For example, at uh, say zimet, yeah. Sample app can be app can uh, depend on the uh, company, yeah, manufacturer, uh, what kind of uh, prefix they want to use, yeah. Uh, CI, CIR, yeah, this cardiovascular, yeah, this one for cardiovascular. Um, XI refer to a uh, chimeric, yeah. Chimeric is about 60, 60 to 70 percent of the uh, what is uh, human part, yeah. MAB is a must. Yeah. So uh, now uh, I think we can recognize yeah, any uh, product yeah, uh, or drug or um, um, whatever with uh, uh, suffix MAB, meaning they are uh, monoclonal antibody. And then uh, we um, uh, see the uh, milestone yeah, with regard to development of. Um, Antibody drug conjugation, yeah, for drug delivery. Uh, since uh, the introduction of magic uh, magic bullet by Paul Ehrlich, 1913, yeah, there are some research has been done uh, to uh, conjugate, yeah, to to check whether the the we have theory, right? We have theory. So everyone got theory now that. Specific cancer will produce antigen that can be uh, uh, recognized yeah, by antibody. So some trial has been done using has been done using um, uh, methotrexate, yeah, building it antibody. But uh, this uh, trial yeah, uh, was uh, uh, failed. Yeah, and then uh, they tried to again uh, what else? Um, uh, some using drug. Uh, they also using um, uh, doxorubicin. Yeah. Uh, uh, but not successful. Yeah, and uh, in two thousand, uh, they try to produce uh, myotap. Yeah, this one is using uh, uh, doxorubicin. Yeah, 
but it was uh, 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 withdrawn yeah from the market uh, from the uh, not from the market from the uh, yeah. clinical trial because uh, fell yeah uh, to pro, uh, to 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 work what is the problem with mild pack yeah uh, mild pack because of uh, premature release yeah um, it is uh, successful yeah it was successful uh, to combine with the drug but when we introduce to human through parenteral administration the drug is um, released during the travel yeah? so when they inject the drug not uh, uh, being released at the side of the cancer but it, it was uh, released uh, during the transport yeah well, that one cannot be used yeah because we don't want systemic effect yeah and then um yes actually uh, already reached the market yeah uh, but maybe not really widely uh, used yeah so 2010 uh, my talk uh, withdrawn yeah from the market and then some research um, um, has been uh, uh, done and successful yeah the first uh, uh, ADC drug um, uh, is uh, uh, was approved by FDA as a trace. Yeah? Uh, this one is for um, uh, non-Hodgkin lymphoma, yeah, and also Katsila, yeah, approved for uh, breast cancer to the 2013. Yeah, uh, if you go to uh, FDA website, you can check actually what is the current uh, development with other type of ADC drug. Yeah? uh they are, go to biologic yeah you can just see uh search rdc drug yeah you can check actually i mean the research uh, is not stopped here yeah it's not stopping here yeah currently many research yeah, has been done by many countries many company actually to develop this rdc but we are talking about the approved one yeah the approved drug um in the market is uh atletis and get so far yeah some drug and still it will go uh, clinical trial yeah? and um, this actually uh, drug um, called the uh, uh, other than azetris and kaisela yeah uh, this besponza yeah uh, besponza was approved uh, for 2017 yeah by Pfizer's yeah <coughs> this one just approved for um uh, certain uh, area only, yeah. Call it um, uh, for certain disease. We call it uh, orphan medicine, yeah. That can uh, recognize C22 positive vessel, yeah. So this one is also available, but uh, I not I, I didn't mention it before, yeah. But but this one is just only for specific uh, disease, yeah. This one also uh, using ADC approach. So um. Maybe big question again, yeah. Before we start with ADC, you know, what makes cell self, uh, what makes uh, a cell a cell surface antigen suitable for antibody targeting in oncology? Yeah, uh, because an ADR expression profile yeah, of uh, abundant, yeah, the much uh, expression yeah, of the uh, homogeneous antigen uh, on external surface of all tumor cells yeah, for multiple tumor types. Yeah? with the majority of patient for each tumor type and absent from normal tissue so this is very very important yeah it must be specific only on certain uh area yeah area here is on the uh, cancer sites only yeah but must be free yeah? absent from normal tissue if not uh, the drug will reach the normal tissue as well yeah? it can kill a normal tissue yeah we don't want that to be happen yeah so this is really the basic uh, theory yeah uh we got to the development of adc yeah in cancer therapy okay again so let's uh, check about the challenge yeah to treat solid tumor you know tumor solid tumor yeah? solid tumor is very difficult to treat because uh, it has high interstitial fluid pressure. Yeah, I mean, even if you able just to apply directly, yeah, let's say the tumor is outside, you apply directly to the drug, yeah, uh, directly on maybe like topical application. Yeah, but the drug maybe not cannot uh, enter because of high interstitial fluid pressure. Yeah? Maybe the drug not able to reach. Yeah, um, so all uh, cell surface yeah? and it has cell uh, density high uh, cells that's why 
difficult yeah that's why for cancer therapy chemotherapy uh, with drug normally uh, taking long eh? long time eh? and also excessive deposition of extra extracellular matrix and also physical barrier composite trauma proteins yeah so um that's why uh, this approach is quite um uh, promising yeah in order to reduce the uh burden or maybe suffering yeah for the patient we know that the cancer patient actually they are suffering yeah they are suffer suffering not only against cancer they are suffering also against the drug that we prescribe to them yeah so this approach is actually um to me is kind of uh, uh very uh useful yeah uh for the patient And then the conjugation of antibodies, yeah. So um, um, drug targeting yeah, and everybody using antibodies has been most useful yeah, in this field, chemotherapy, uh, because uh, some uh, what called um, uh, drawbacks yeah, or disadvantages of anti cancer drug. Yeah. See, anti cancer drug high toxicity, yeah. And uh, they uh, frequently have low therapeutic index. I mean, the therapeutic index and toxic uh, dose is very narrow. Yeah? High toxicity means it must be very toxic. Yeah? Very toxic. If you give it to human, the human itself can be uh, killed. Yeah? So uh, we don't have any option. That's why we still give it to the patient. Yeah? But uh, what we discussed today is just, you know, close. Uh, discussion yeah so then to what called to discourage i mean uh, patient to get the their treatment using chemotherapy yeah so uh this one is um, we get to the uh, role of uh, idc yeah you see this effect yeah and also this uh, dose yeah so by uh, using idc in the treatment we can actually expand yeah the uh, therapeutic windows yeah between uh, the toxic effect and also when you get to uh, i mean the uh, toxic and also when you get to effect uh, 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 therapeutic uh, dose yeah so you can expand the therapeutic windows by uh, using this uh, approach so now uh, we move to the component of uh, antibody drug uh, conjugation yeah so what we should have uh, we have to have this monoclonal antibody yeah we have uh, chosen already yeah, what kind of antibody that can recognize yeah, uh, specific uh, antigen produced by uh, cancer cell yeah, for uh, uh, breast cancer we recognize HER2 protein yeah, and for non-Hodgkin lymphoma CD30 or maybe CD22 yeah. um, so we have to have a, a specific antibody and then to uh, link actually yeah, how to conjugate drug this one of the body is a drug how to combine them yeah yeah so this linker must be specific yeah uh, meaning um they will stable during the travel the traveling of the drug to the target site yeah so there's some a linker that can be used yeah and then after reaching the target site i mean uh, reaching the cancers the linker should be uh, cliff, yeah, should be cliffs, or some linker are not cliffable, yeah, um, but will be digested uh, by uh, the uh, biodegradable letter, yeah, all together, yeah, um, uh, of this component will be, uh, you know, for non uh, cliffable linker. We'll check it later, yeah, to get more understanding with regard to this. Uh, uh, composition so the concept of uh, adc yeah? see um uh, uh this cell yeah these cells yeah uh, let's say uh, this one is a breast cancer cell so they have a hair to positive yeah normally for breast cancer patient they will check uh antibody title yeah so whether they have hair to positive or not yeah in their blood yeah then the uh, cell surface of this cancer cell uh, produce HER2 specific protein. Yeah? And then uh, certain antibody will recognize that antigen. Yeah? They will uh, reach uh, this site and, and they will carry the drug. Yeah? 
So, by using this approach, the, uh, it will increase drug delivery. Eh? Uh, increase drug delivery meaning the drug will only will be um, released at a certain site. Eh? To reach receptor, yeah, what can say that can to reach receptor similar to other type of drug, yeah. Actually, uh, the drug what we uh, take, yeah, and also if we compare with the amount of drug that can bind to receptor, actually the the the, the what did the the portion yeah, of the drug that can that can the drug that we need actually very less, yeah, compared to the drug we that we take through oral, yeah, because uh, let's say we take sample prostamol. Yeah, prostamol uh, one uh, tablet is uh, I think 60, uh, 650. Yeah. Actually, how much of the prostamol is needed actually to relieve the pain or something? Maybe just only a few micron. Yeah? Where is others? Yeah? The others will be go through our body. Yeah? Uh, will be, I mean, uh, of course, it will increase the work uh, load of our liver in order to uh, metabolize it and, and also uh, increase the load of the uh, kidney in order to dispose it. Yeah? So uh, by uh, using this ADC actually you can increase the delivery. I mean the amount can be uh, you know um, reach the target yeah? and uh, reduce normal tissue drug exposure yeah? because we don't want them to be uh, released uh, during the traveling. Yeah? So uh, there is no effect to uh, tissue, yeah? uh, I mean, other tissue or normal tissue, yeah? and then it can improve uh, therapeutic windows. So now, uh, we get to the composition again, to, uh, you would like to develop ADC. Yeah? So it should have, um, uh, it has uh, monoclonal antibodies yeah? and should have linker and also the drug itself. Yeah? So uh, each component should have uh, uh, a specific uh, uh, what you call properties, yeah. Like monoclonal antibody should be selective, yeah. Affinity and uh, less monogenicity, yeah, and so on. Yeah? They should have kind of uh, properties. And linkage itself must be stable in circulation, yeah. So there is no enzyme, pH, or environment that can actually break them or cleave them during the travel, and uh, should be stable in product storage. Meaning, when we store it, the drug before we give to the patient must be stable. Yeah? We still bind with, um, I mean, still uh, do their job, yeah, to combine antibody and drug, yeah, not, maybe uh, during the storage, they, they are not working, they release it, right, so we, when we give the vision, the drug no longer to be in ADC form, yeah, and then uh, trigger to release the uh, payload inside uh, tumor cells, yeah, compatible for conjugation, of course, yeah, and then uh, the drug itself must be high potency, yeah, high potency mean must be very toxic, yeah, that's why, for cancer, uh, actually the drug that we give it is very toxic, yeah? very high potency to kill cancer cells. Yeah? Stable, must be stable. Uh, low immune density, yeah? and uh, this actually other properties. Yeah? Uh, so uh, we can actually um, determine what kind of uh, drug is suitable to, to be used. Yeah? And uh, when we get to um, uh, immunoconjugate, yeah? Um, we can also uh, conjugate other um, uh, substance. Yeah? Uh, as we know, to treat um, uh, cancer, yeah, you can use uh, yeah, whether we're going to use uh, drug chemo or radio, right? Radiotherapy, and um, radio actually uh, very uh, effective yeah, to kill cancers. So uh, radio. Uh, uh, isotope, you know, uh, radionuclide also can be combined with uh, a monocontibody in order to be used in ADC. Yeah? So, um, can use a radio uh, uh, nuclide, yeah? uh, also um, a protein or monotoxin, yeah? and also we can use drug. Yeah? So, not only drug, yeah? a toxin, a radio uh, isotope can also be uh, conjugate to uh, anti uh, antibodies. Yeah? So let's say um, uh, for uh, radio immunoconjugate, yeah, you can use beta emitting radio isotope, yeah, y trium uh, 90 yeah, or iodine 131. Yeah? It is very effective. Yeah? Uh, by using technology, you can actually um, uh, combine yeah, uh, this 
radio isotope with monocantibodies. Yeah? So later we can uh, uh, use it to kill cancer cells. Yeah? This is example. Yeah? Uh, one, uh, one, three, one uh, um, uh, iodine. Yeah? Using this one is y trium. Yeah? Okay. And also radio label antibody can be used to to detect yeah the location of the tumor yeah? because the radio label radio sort of is very sensitive yeah we can actually scan our body yeah um uh, to localize tumor yeah because the tumor is specific to produce antigen yeah we can bind um, uh, antibody with radio setup yeah? yeah, inject to patient and uh, uh, we will go directly to the cancer location, yeah, and uh, whole body can be screened, yeah, it can be scanned, yeah? scanning through um, uh, the scanning machine, what is the name of the screening machine, yeah, so we can localize where actually the, the cancer position, yeah, before we do operation of sample, yeah, through our body, whether it is the, in the lung, brain, whatever, yeah, we can check, yeah. So uh, toxin also uh, can be used, yeah. Like um, toxin actually is very toxic, right? But if you able to manage them, yeah, uh, uh, to be released to the certain, uh, I mean, cancer location will be useful, yeah. So we need, um, uh, need to do research on that, yeah. Need to do research on that, and many other toxin actually, yeah. We know that toxin is very, we have to avoid toxin, right? Any kind of toxin we should avoid. But uh, maybe they are toxic again. Maybe they are uh, very useful to treat certain cancer. We don't know. Right? That's why we need to do uh, research, yeah? Yes, in normal life, whatever toxin we have to avoid, right? But actually, we can utilize them to treat uh, cancer, yeah? So the what uh, the, the challenge uh, challenges is how to deliver them to the target site. And then to, um, this antibody drug again, yeah. So uh, uh, actually, our topic is related to antibody drug, yeah. So uh, this one is very useful, check, yeah. Then to, uh, some, uh, I mean, um, uh, structures, yeah, of the drug. Why not? Uh, uh, all drugs can be conjugated. Yeah, uh, actually, it is depend on the uh, the ability of uh, linker. Yeah, uh, can bind to the drug at the same time they can bind to antibodies. Yeah, so um, uh, sample the drug that uh, has been uh, uh, studied. Yeah, for ADC, doxorubicin. Yeah, this one is uh, uh, not successful. Doxorubicin. Yeah, and calciamycin. Yeah. This one is my track just now. Yeah, maybe I I I I I, uh, uh, I wrongly uh, mentioned. Yeah, actually, uh, for my track is not oxalobicin. Yeah, my calicia mycin. Yeah, maybe in the previous slide I mentioned it was toxo. Yeah, not not toxo. Yeah, calicia mycin. This calicia mycin is very toxic. Yeah, uh, compound. And uh, next one is uh, always uh, tatin. Yeah, and also uh my stance in but the success uh, this this mallet well, uh, was not successful because of uh, premature release yeah during the paper. but currently some uh company still doing uh, because of the effectiveness of i mean the activity of colimicin is very promising yes not stopping uh you know like my attack has been uh, withdrawn 2010 uh, yeah? so but they're still working on it to improve the delivery yeah and as a trace, yeah, using a statin, uh, So, uh, what we have uh, at the moment, yeah, as uh, a trace and also Katsaila, yeah. So, this as a uh, uh, detect, yeah, CD30, yeah, this is produced by you know, Kun Nyoma, yeah, and uh, Katsaila detect uh, HER2, yeah, uh, protein. So, this comparison, yeah, comparison between, um, Comparison between uh, uh, um, 
Ketsela and Asetris. Yeah. See, um, this Ketsela, yeah, uh, approved 2013, yeah, uh, Asetris 2010. Actually, my view, my view on the screen is blocked by some. <laughs> Uh, this uh, uh, button, yeah? and then so um, okay, so uh, this different uh, the the differences yeah, between Kisela and Cetris, yeah. So monocanthi bodies here they use uh, humanized IgG, yeah. Uh, pro this one is using chimeric IgG produced by Cho cells, yeah. And a target antigen, yeah, this one is SHER2, yeah, this one is CD30. What else? Uh, patient selection must be patient with positive this one, yeah, this one positive for CD30, yeah. And what else? The fresh, yeah. This uh, we get to the medicinal chemistry, yeah, to the comparison yeah, between the drug and antibody, yeah, this 3.5, this one 4, yeah. And the drug that uh, being used, yeah, drug payload is called metensin or the M1, yeah. So the mechanism of action of metensin is microtubule inhibitor. Yeah? This part of the DNA is disease. Yeah? So it can kill, uh, of course, they will affect the cell cancer to growth. Yeah? This is monomotor arrostatin. Yeah? Uh, it also working on microtubule disrupting agent. Yeah? We're working on DNA. Uh, and uh, linker, yeah, linker, they use this one is um, uh, M uh, MCC linker. Yeah? This one is they use valine citrulline linker. I will check later. Yeah, what is uh, uh, what is uh, MCC? What is valine citrulline? Yeah, and finished product. Um, it is in lipolyzed in dry form. Yeah, uh, this one also in lipolyzed because it is biologic product. Yeah, biophysical product must be in dry form. Yeah, cannot be in liquid. Yeah, uh, lipolyzed is actually a product of uh, freeze drying. Yeah. So we have to reconstitute. Yeah, you know, we have to add a uh, water for injection before we uh, uh, we inject to the patient. Yeah, and we get to the dose. This one. Yeah, uh, this one the dose. Yeah, finished product, shelf life about thirty six months. This one. This is comparison. Yeah, uh, between the two successful ADC uh, that is available in the market. So uh, this one the mechanism. Yeah, how uh, they are working. Yeah. So this um, is cancer cells, eh? it's cancer cells, yeah. So we they have uh, antigen yeah, surrounding, yeah, and then uh, we introduce the uh, anti uh, uh, this this basic understanding, yeah. But we are not uh, talking about this uh, very specifically, yeah. But uh, what happened? Yeah? So uh, surrounding this cancer cell, there is antibody, antigen. This our antibody. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the the how the their work. Yeah. So they we can release here. Yeah. Can release the drug and enter the cell. And sometimes the uh, ADC uh, can also uh, internalize into the cells. Yeah. And then. The, uh, because of uh, different uh, condition yeah, between uh, this uh, endosome and lysosome, yeah, and the drug will be released, yeah, and then this free drug, yeah. Now we have free drug here, yeah, free drug. From this surface also, drug will be internalized, yeah. Maybe the drug will be released on the surface of the cancer cell, and drug will be internalized later, yeah, and bind to the target, yeah. The target is DNA, yeah, through microtubule binding, yeah, uh, inhibitor, yeah. Of course, it can uh, 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 kill the uh, cancer cell later. Yeah? Okay, just your um, acid label link, uh, linker and so the sulfate linkers. Yeah, and another one is uh, uh, non cleavable linkers. So acid label linkers because of different pH. Yeah, uh, in um, endosomal and also lysosomal. Yeah, so uh, because of acid. Yeah. The drug will be released, yeah, and also the sulfate linkers because of um, this uh, uh, called uh, 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 enzyme, yeah? and peptide linkers will be uh, released by this enzyme catepsin, yeah. 
and non cleavable linkers, yeah, will, uh, the drug will be released after internal lysis uh, of uh, ADC, yeah, and it will undergo uh, catabolic degradation. Okay. So this is the uh, uh, structure yeah, of uh, the linkers. Yeah. Can use this one cleavable linkers, yeah, uh, non cleavable, yeah. Uh, non uh, cleavable linker can be a valine citrulline, yeah, hydrazone linker. This one acid sensitive, yeah. Uh, this one the sulfide uh, uh, based on uh, glucata, uh, glutathione sensitive, yeah. This is actually non cleavable linker, yeah. Okay. So this is the, the complete uh, composition yeah, of the acid trees. Yeah? They have drug payload, yeah, drug is the drug, yeah, and they have linker here. Yeah, uh, else is the antibody that can uh, that can only recognize CD30 antibody. This Katsaila, yeah, again, this uh, what call this um, using calcium I think this one is uh, still uh, called a uh, clinical trial example. Yeah. Can check in the uh, FDA website yeah, to check what is the status yeah, of this uh, ADC development. So, another approach in the ADC is using antibody uh, directed enzyme product therapy. Yeah. So, we can actually introduce product. Yeah, product uh, the drug itself is not active. Yeah. So, when we introduce the patient, the drug will be later uh, convert, yeah, like. Uh, this one using ADAPT, yeah, antibody directed enzyme product therapy. So um, we use a pyrimidine glucuronide. Yeah. So when we introduce to the patient, yeah, the, and because the enzyme, yeah, it will be uh, converted to pyrimidine, yeah, and then uh, that will be active against uh, cancer cells. There's some um, process yeah, involved in the, uh, the uh, administration yeah, of the uh, ADC. Yeah? So, what happened? Yeah, uh, we get to um, uh, efficiency yeah? of the administration. Yeah, if you give, we introduce it into patient, yeah, uh, how much uh, ADC reach the tumor? Yeah, need to be studied. Yeah, how much? Yeah, and um, after that, how much ADC uh, binding to the muscles? Yeah, and then. Um, Next, how much IDC internalized into the cell, and then uh, how much of that will be cleave need to be studied, and also how much drug reaching the target, yeah, and, and this why. So this um, uh, what called um, a step need to be monitored, yeah, in order to uh, check, yeah, to ensure the efficacy of IDC, yeah. So some factor, yeah, the percentage, yeah. So what we expect is must be uh, 100, 100, 100, yeah, 100 percent. But uh, maybe in the uh, what a real uh, finding maybe not. Yeah? So this uh, this uh, advantages and also disadvantages. Yeah. Uh, for the conclusion, yeah. Uh, so uh, the basic um, actually uh, the basic. Uh, Actually, yeah, because of uh, cancer cell uh, produce antigen, yeah, specific antigen, then that antigen can be recognized, yeah, by, by specific antibodies, yeah, and then um, uh, the specific antibodies can be conjugate, yeah, with uh, drug, yeah, the uh, very potent drug binding together using linker, yeah, and then um, we introduce it into patient, and the patient will. Uh, uh, what call uh, the drug will go to the directly yeah, to the site of the cancer, and then because of different condition, whether it is because of enzyme yeah, surrounding the cell or maybe because of pH, the drug will be released, yeah, and later on the drug will be uh, free, yeah, and if they are free, they will do their job, yeah, whether they are, uh, yeah, depend on their mechanism, yeah, where actually whether to do microtubule, yeah, or maybe other kind of activities can be also on cell membrane, yeah. Uh, uh, it depends yeah, depend on the uh, mechanism of action of each drug. I think that's all. So, uh, thank you very much. I will give it to uh, Mr. Moderator.
Let's stop this. Uh, thank you, Prof. Uh, Taher, uh, for your explanation. Uh, for the next agenda, we are going to. Um, we are going uh, for next session is Q and A. Guest uh, guest lecture is uh, our participant are welcome. If there is anything you want to ask, by raising your hand, uh, raise feature. Or the chat column, please. Does anyone to ask you about um, antibody drug communication in kasat rafi? Participant are welcome. If there is if there uh, if there is anything you want to ask, raising you want to ask a question by raising your hand to, or through the chat column, please. Does anyone of you want to ask a question? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dici. Uh, I want to ask to Prof. Taher about the monoclonal antibody. Uh, how about the stability issue for monoclonal antibody? As we know that uh, protein is not stable in maybe uh, heat or uh, other uh, thing that really critic for the protein. Thank you, Mr. Tahir. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, yeah. So yes, I uh, regard to the stability of the monoclonal body because uh, monoclonal body is uh, protein based. Uh, they are not stable. So the stability stability issue during the storage. That's why uh, the product must be stored in um, lipolyzed form. Yeah? I mean, the right form. Yeah? Right form. Uh, of course, the storage uh, normally they put in a refrigerator or a low temperature, yeah? but not frozen. Yeah? So uh, in if uh, they are in right form. They are most of all, yeah, because of uh, amino acid consists of uh, amino acid that can oxidize and also uh, can be oxidized by uh, um, other agent. Yeah? So uh, and also um, called uh, if it, they are in water, maybe they are not uh, stable as well. Yeah, so the storage must be in right form and uh, uh, low temperature. Yeah. So uh, uh, when uh, we want to use it, just add uh, uh, water for injection and then um, give it to patient. Of course, uh, the preparation must be uh, finished uh, as soon as possible. Yeah? Otherwise, if the um, uh, packaging is just only single dose. Uh, OK, that's all. Uh, Regard to the stability to overcome the stability of uh, 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 similar to uh, insulin as well. Insulin is a uh, protein based, but insulin nowadays available in uh, uh, liquid form. Thank you for your answer, Prof. Anyone to ask question? Participants are welcome to ask your uh, question if there is need anything. Does anyone? Okay, Prof. Uh, I will ask you something about uh, antibody drug conjugation. Uh, maybe you can explain the um, advantage of the antibody drug conjugation in cancer if, if it was compared to the small molecule. Yes, uh, actually the approach of ADC, we don't want uh, drug to be uh, uh, what called produce a systemic effect. Yeah, meaning uh, untargeted uh, uh, what target. Yeah, so if the drug is in uh, just in conventional uh, formulation without ADC, so meaning it will affect a healthy cell as well. Yeah, because the drug will be given give it to the patient and uh, produce a systemic effect. 
but uh, by using ADC, maybe the dose will be reduced. Yeah, dose can be reduced actually. Yeah, as we compare with prastamol just now. Yeah, prastamol is uh, dose is about six hundred fifty. So actually, how much receptor really need? Yeah, maybe in micron, uh, mic uh, micro size, uh, micro size. So that's the advantage. Meaning, uh, it can reduce the uh, uh, toxicity of the drug itself. Yeah, and also it can uh, also because the toxicity. Uh, I mean. The dose maybe not that not the same. Yeah? Sample for uh, uh, if you are able to make ADC uh, for doxorubicin, sample doxorubicin, how much uh, per just per, uh, confessional administration? But using ADC, the dose may be very less. Yeah, very less compared to uh, just uh, in confessional formulation. Uh, yes, that's all. That's all. And uh, so then the, the advantage of this um, antibody drug conjugation in cancer therapy is it uh, very, very important, yes, sir? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, uh, participant, if there anything uh, you want to ask? Plus, maybe? <laughs> Does anyone you want to ask something about um, this guest lecture, especially uh, with the uh, topic antibody drug conjugation and cancer therapy, of course. Or maybe this one is quite topic is quite advanced for them. Uh, what actually? Uh, which year is it, Adam? Um, tahun. Tahun. Semua tahun. <laughs> no, because maybe it is uh, quite uh, what call advanced for them. So uh, I hope that uh, actually it is not beyond your expectation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the participants are uh, first grade, second, and and then uh, uh, last semester, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But at least they say they have some. I uh, get some uh, insight or idea with regard to the. Uh, development of new, uh, you know, anti-cancer therapy. Uh, because because uh, we have to face the bitter fact, actually, when we treat the cancer therapy, uh, the cancer patient using a drug, yeah? we have to solo, we have to tell them, even though it is pahit, yeah? but we have to try to save our, maybe our family, neighbor, or other, to, sur to survive against uh, but they still uh, uh, consume or to use the drug, even though the side effect is very uh, called uh, harmful or very uh, bad to, to, to our body. Yeah. Yeah. Minimize the toxicity. Yes. Yeah. Does anyone you want to ask something about antibody in cancer or anything else about drug design maybe? <laughs> I think so because I'm a pharmacy what call a lecturer. You can say, you can uh, ask anything. <laughs> ask anything. <laughs> yeah, anything related to pharmacy. Don't ask me uh, what uh, we get to economy. How to increase uh, what call market <laughs> value of the change, uh, community. <laughs> But it's okay, no problem. I think uh, they are, uh, what calls, uh, got uh, something uh, from my lecture. Yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor uh, Dr. Mohamed bin Bakhtiar. Dear colleague and friend, that is agenda that we have present to you today as we have finished our lecture. Uh, we would like to thanks again to Prof. Dr. M. Uh, Muhammad Tahir bin Bakhtiar, PhD, for being a presenter or speaker in this guest lecture. Hopefully, the knowledge uh it convey can be useful for all of us i mean yeah, well, I mean. Uh, so then uh, let's close this guest lecture with the word of hamdallah and kafaratul majlis together alhamdulillah okay thank you very much i would like to what call apologize for any uh, mistake or whatever during my lecture maybe we can uh apa jumpa di lain waktu ya terima kasih yep Amin. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Prof. Welcome. Thank you, Prof. Salam.